If you think you know how the War of the Lands ends because you read a novel, sit down and hold my drink. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about the alternate endings to the War of the Lands. I'd like to take a moment and thank the members of this channel, and invite you to consider becoming a member by visiting the link in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate links. I am referencing DL14 Dragons of Triumph primarily for this information. If I leave anything out or misspeak, please leave a comment below. The ending to your home game of Dragonlance DL 1 through 14 has every opportunity of being completely different from the novels and anyone else's home game. This is not solely because of the player's choices, but rather fate. <laughs> or more specifically, the fate number randomly generated from the Talus card deck from DL 13 Dragons of Truth in the Glitter Palace. If the heroes chose to avoid or otherwise failed to enter the Glitter Palace, at the beginning of DL14 Dragons of Triumph, the DM will determine which ending the players will face, again, randomly with a die roll. You see, the novel presented one possible ending, but the novels are not following the course of the modules. They actually deviated from them entirely during Dragons of Winter Night, and before that in earlier modules so as not to spoil the experience of playing through the saga for the players. The modules have six possible endings to the War of the Lands, and the fate of the Dark Queen. Now I want to present each possible ending, but first let me identify them. The first is Fizban or Paladine versus the Dark Queen. The second is Waylorn or Huma returns from the past. The third is Sacrifice Self to seal the void. The fourth is Barum or Paladine seals the gates. The fifth is Barum and his sister. And finally, the sixth is the death of the gem. Let's take a look at each of these possible endings and what they mean for the overall story. Many of these will no doubt be unfamiliar to you, so if you ever want to run through DL 1-14 through 14 yourself and don't wish to have the potential ending spoiled, stop watching now. The first possible ending is to have Fizban, who is the avatar of Paladine, directly intervene to seal shut the gate to the Abyss. Doing this requires a significant amount of power. If Fizban uses his power too early in the adventure, he not only alerts the Queen of Darkness to his presence, allowing her to bolster her defenses against him, but he also loses the potential power to drive the Queen back through the gate. This is represented by a percentage that is lowered through spell use. The biggest challenge of this possible ending is smuggling Fizban into the Council Chamber of the Temple during the Second Council of the Dragon High Lords to confront the Dark Queen. The second possible ending is Huma returning from the past. In DL10 Dragons of Dreams, the heroes enter a grove of Waylorn, where they find a man sleeping in a tower. Once awakened, he reveals himself to be Waylorn Wiversbane. If the heroes mention dragons, Waylorn claims to be the reincarnation of Huma from the Age of Might. If this ending is randomly selected, the heroes must smuggle Waylorn or Huma into the gate during the second council of the Dragon High Lords with a Dragonlance. How do you smuggle a Dragonlance and a reincarnated Huma into the temple? Good questions. Let the players figure it out. Once there, he will sacrifice himself by using the Dragonlance to hold the queen at bay as the gate shuts behind him. It only works if he enters the portal before the Dark Queen emerges. The third ending requires self-sacrifice to seal the void. This is similar to the previous ending, but requires a hero to bring the Dragonlance into the council chamber and present it before the queen as if it were a holy symbol. This drives her back into the portal, and the hero can then walk through and close it from within. Once closed, the dragon army falls to disunity and dispersal, degenerating into petty tribes and wandering groups. The fourth ending involves Paladine taking the form of Baron to reclaim the soul of Baron's sister from the temple. Once he's done this, he can use his divine power to seal the gate. This is a mixture of the first and fifth options where Paladine takes a more active role. The heroes must still smuggle this Baron into the temple, however. The fifth possible ending is the one most are familiar with. 
Baron Everman takes the green gemstone down into the depths of the Temple of Tachesis and places it into the foundation stone. This reunites his soul with his sister's soul and consecrates the temple into a holy place. This bars Tachesis from using the gate forever. The difficulty is in smuggling Barum into the temple depths and having him force his bare chest against the socket in the stone. And the sixth and final possible ending to the Dragonland saga is the death of the gem. In this ending, the gem's return to the foundation stone permanently opens the gate. That's why Tachesis sent the dragon army to search for it. So the heroes must destroy the gem to prevent the gate from opening. To do this, the heroes need to bring Barum to the Anvil of Might and break the gem on the anvil. This anvil is located in the Temple of Darkness. Barum must kneel next to the anvil, and a fighter must deliver a single blow to the gem as it rests against the anvil's edge. This shatters the gem and grants Barum peace in death. While all of this is happening, Lord Gunther, commanding the armies of Whitestone, is drawing in upon Naraka to have a final massive battle system confrontation with the dragon armies. Ultimately, with the defeat of the Dark Queen, there is no peace to be found, however. The only reason elves, humans, gnomes, dwarves, and kender were working together was because of the unified dragon armies. Now that the heroes broke that unity, they will all return to their respective lands as war over each nation inevitably continues, isolated and separate. This is the harsh reality of Dragonlance. And it is in stark contrast to most other fantasy worlds and even other Dungeons and Dragons campaign settings, where all the races of good fight in unity. Not so here. In Dragonlance, the races are not natural allies, and are less concerned with the health and welfare of each other, rather focusing on their own nations, I would argue understandably. This is language directly lifted from the module, for those of you inclined to pretend Dragonlance is something else. Success is seen through the hope that inevitably arises in some of these nations. Hope for a future for their children, and peaceful treaties between neighbors and nations. You see, the War of the Lance was never about destroying evil. It was about returning balance to the world of Kryn. And in balance, there is as much evil in the world as there is good. Not entirely unlike the dualities we face within ourselves throughout life. We choose who we want to be while we wage inner war against our natures and desires. But that is all I have to say about the alternate endings of the War of the Lance. What do you think of the possible endings? Do you have a favorite among them? And finally, does the disparity between endings of the novels and modules excite you to possibilities or frustrate you with inconsistency? Leave a comment below. I would like to take a moment and remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring the bell to get notified about upcoming videos, and click the like button. This all goes to help other Dragonlance fans learn about this channel and its content. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember... Most of us walk in light and shadow, but there are the chosen few who carry their own light to brighten both day and night.